Let's get to some DJ Envy things, right? DJ Envy update. DJ Envy is in oops is in big fucking trouble, bro. Um, Caesar Pena just got arrested. He's uh, oh, 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 sorry. Caesar Pena just got arrested. His partner in crime, and they're saying they're alleging they're alleging they are alleging out there on the streets that the feds came to iHeartMedia. Um, the home of fucking Breakfast Club, and they also confiscated loads of computers and shit. So it's looking kind of crazy. He hasn't been arrested yet. Um, there's no warrant out for him. I think in the report or whatever it may be, police report for Cesar Pena, um, Envy is referred to as person one or something. So he's not referred to as a victim, which is a big distinction. So clearly they're doing some research, some investigation still in the background before things change. Um, Tony the Closer, who's the person who broke this story, big up him, follow him on YouTube and on Twitter and stuff. He has updated people and said that he's checked and he's seen that Cesar Pena and DJ Envy have unfollowed each other on social media. And if you don't think about social media unfollowings, that's usually a big marker as to where a, um, you know, two people stand in their relationship. So the fact that these two former um, colleagues in work and in flipping houses have now followed each other on Instagram, it's probably the biggest indication that we need to know that maybe something has happened behind the scenes. Maybe Caesar went to the feds, got picked up and squealed. That's why MB is fucking unfollowing him. Maybe MB is trying to do a bit of self-preservation, but it's a little bit too late now. Who knows? But this is the current update now regarding everything that's going on. It's getting wild. It's getting crazy. It's getting really, really fucking dicey. My team exclusive less than a week after we broke the story of investors who say they were scammed in a real estate venture promoted by radio host DJ Envy. There is a major development. DJ Envy's longtime business partner has been arrested by federal agents in New Jersey. Cesar Pena has been charged with fraud. Investigative reporter Sarah Wallace has been all over the story. She has the latest from federal court in Newark. <laughs> Cesar Pena arrested by the feds this morning on a charge of wire fraud and brought here to the federal courthouse in Newark. They say this may be just the beginning. He could face additional charges of money laundering. You might know him on Instagram as Flippin' NJ, my friend Cesar Pena. DJ Envy often had his... My friend. Oh, damn it, DJ Envy. You're involved. Hal, Cesar Pena on the radio hosts The Breakfast Club Show. Started with no money, and here I am, $50 million later in real estate. I know this isn't something that I should be commenting on, considering the way that I look, I understand. But am I the only person who thinks that I wouldn't be comfortable giving a DJ money because he's a fucking DJ? And I also wouldn't be willing to invest money in any kind of investment with a guy as fat as Cesar Pena is. If you can't have control over what you put in your mouth, why should I think you have any control or any acumen when it comes to finance? Why? You don't have the self-discipline to not drink a fucking yoo at 1 a.m. at night or to order another Domino's at 2 a.m. at night. Why should I trust you with my money? I know it's shallow. I know it doesn't really speak to business. But surely, a person that looks the way that Cesar Pena looks, no one should ever trust him with their money because you can't be trusted around food. Estate. promoting their real estate partnership now in this federal complaint the government says pina engaged in a ponzi-like scheme involving investors adding pina defrauded dozens of victims of millions of dollars the only thing season has it done is a caesar salad <laughs> we interviewed many of them i lost two hundred thousand dollars eight hundred thirty five thousand dollars in total i lost a total of sixty four thousand dollars a million dollars Envy, Damn. whose real name is rashawn casey was not charged but many of the alleged victims say they were influenced by his celebrity he's advertising this all over the radio and on television investors say pina promised he would rehab and flip distressed properties many in patterson giving a 30 percent profit within months the only thing I'd say is that as, as, as for the victims, if you've got children and you tell them off a lot and you tell them, and you know, you're some parents are really toxic and they're like, you're so dumb. How did I raise such a stupid son, such a stupid daughter? If you're that parent and you gave Caesar and fucking DJ Envy money, you can't ever talk to your kids again, can you really? You can't ever have anything crazy to say to your kids because they're just going to look at you and say, nigga, what? Didn't you give this fat motherfucker money? And this DJ says, DJ Envy, money to buy you a fucking house, to flip it and shit.
Do you honestly think you have a right to tell me anything? That's the issue at hand as well. You got scammed and the scam wasn't even that sophisticated. It was just them investing into homes, thinking they're going to get guaranteed returns and get their foot on the property ladder. It wasn't even that, that complicated of a fucking scam. And they all got duped and they all look like fairly decent, well-to-do, well-adjusted, you know, mature adults and stuff with families and shit. If they have kids, their kids are going to be looking at them like, dad, really? Dozens have now filed lawsuits saying they never got any of their investment back. Pina is accused of pocketing $17 million Damn. from just four properties. As news broke of his arrest, we were interviewing Jeff Robinson, who owns a food truck and car wash in Patterson. My son, it's my world. And these people took advantage. His son, Jeff Jr., tragically died in a car accident six months ago, leaving two children behind. Jeff Jr. had invested 325000 Damn! They've got dying men. They've got dead man funds. They haven't paid back yet. RIP to Jeff Jr. They've got dead man funds. Nah, these niggas belong under the fucking jail, bro. Cover these guys' feet in fucking concrete like they used to do in the fucking mafia days and drop them off in the nearest fucking ocean. God damn it, bro dollars with Pina in this Basea property. The dad says Pina then went dark. On that day I buried my son, I called Caesar. Oh bro, I'm gonna meet you. I have text corresponding with Caesar, text messages. Oh, I'm, I'm running a little behind. He never met me here. But my main concern is getting what's due, due to those children. It's not fair. The comfort would be when my grandkids or in position when they have trust accounts with that money that he owes those children. I really do hope, for the sake of Caesar and DJ Envy, I really do hope that Jeff Jr. guy who passed away, RIP to him, I hope his passing away has nothing to do with the money. You know what I'm getting at. I'm not going to say it, but I hope it has nothing to do with the money. Because if his passing away has anything to do with the money, these motherfuckers are the most evil, down dirty bastards I've ever seen. But if it's just two, you know, separate situations that don't connect, okay, fair enough. But if his passing has anything to do with his money, these guys deserve everything they're getting, everything they're going to get. Disgusting, bro. Pena pleaded not guilty. He has to post a $1 million bond and is being released on electronic monitoring. He cannot leave the state of New Jersey. No comment from DJ Envy. An inside source tells us that the iHeartRadio offices were visited by the feds who wow. took out electronic equipment as part of this investigation. That's fucking crazy, right? The feds went to iHeart and took laptops and computers and shit. What does that tell you? Does that tell you what I think is telling me? That DJ Envy was running some of those scams from his work computers. <laughs> he was what? Withdrawing funds, wiring funds from a fucking work computer that he was scamming on. Are you insane? That's like kids, are kids in schools these days doing fucking credit card? Back in the day when I was in school, the big scam that everyone used to do was fucking dumps, right? Like card dumps. You steal people's bank DLs. You'd buy loads of shit. The idea behind it was like, oh, the bank's always going to give them back the money. It doesn't really matter. All that fucking malarkey. But you usually do them on like, you know, on like burner laptops. You do it with burner laptops. You'd use dongles or you'd go to public Wi-Fi. Play. But you wouldn't ever do it on your home computer with your home Wi-Fi. That's fucking stupid. This guy was running scams, which is already bad. But if the feds took computers from his workplace, does that mean that they have seen like traces of information that links back to his workplace so maybe he was wiring stuff to himself maybe he put in application for some housing whatever happens like that's absolutely nuts i cannot understand that level of stupidity it's absolutely crazy but also goes to show the hubris and the arrogance of these guys they honestly never thought they were going to get caught that's the odd thing i always thought for me and maybe because i'm not a scammer so i don't know how scammers mindsets work but i know when i was coming up in the hood and shit right scams were like a means to an end they were never like full they were never like a full time for everything if you did a scam it's because you didn't have the money to afford the thing that you wanted so i remember at the time back in the day there were these scams everyone was doing was the amazon refund scam do you guys remember that it was like many many years ago but i think it was back when amazon refunds were a little bit more easy to get by and i think that basically the whole premise behind it was that you could order stuff to yourself and keep getting it refunded or get new stuff sent to yourself and then you could sell the stuff that you had in surplus so i think at that time in the hood there were people buying like yeah i think i might have got my mum like a henry hoover 
from that, right? Like many years ago, I feel like I got my mum like a Henry Hoover from that sort of stuff. So people were buying like, I don't know, food processors, Hoovers, washing machines whatever you couldn't naturally afford if you were like kind of down bad you do that and then anything else you had surplus you maybe sell it to get some cash but it was a means to an end because you couldn't afford the thing let me get the thing now but it's never forever these type of guys nowadays the scamming guys they think they can scam forever they think the scam is never going to end because in my head i'm thinking if you're doing this type of scam surely after the first couple of millions you low okay it's, this is gonna, this is getting hot because every million you get it's basically a victim that you burned. So you have to keep generating new leads. And with every lead, you're also making yourself more exposed. So you'd think to yourself, if you're sensible, okay, this scam can only run its course a certain time, then I'm going to switch it up again. Maybe get into something else, crypto, NFTs, whatever it may be. So I'm surprised that these guys got caught off guard so easily, to be honest, because clearly this was a scam from minute zero. They were always running a scam. There's not many people who are coming out really saying, oh no, Caesar and MB were good businessmen. I have not seen that. So clearly something was happening behind the scenes. I'm only too sure. Anyway, regardless of that, I want to play a clip here um, that features DJ MB talking to, I forgot the guy's name, the, the, the rapper, but he was on a podcast before everything blew up talking about his businesses and what he's been doing with the flipping houses stuff. And he makes a really interesting remark about... Um, he makes an interesting remark. So let me change this headline here. He makes a really interesting remark about Joe Budden. And he basically says Joe Budden was never interested in his businesses. And it's really prophetic because Joe Budden was one of the first people to call it out and say, this is a scam and they're going to end up in prison. So here, DJ Envy talking a few years ago about the whole thing that he does now. This is really interesting to fucking listen to. Caesar is flipping NJ is uh, my partner in right. New Jersey. He owns over 1600 units in New Jersey and all throughout the country. Caesar was in prison before. Caesar was in prison. Caesar wow. was locked up and he learned how to do real estate in prison. In pri wow. Surely in, every, in any other demographic, and maybe it's only black and brown people, because I know it would work here in the UK too. I don't think there's any other racial demographic that would be impressed or that would want to give money to a convicted felon. Prove yourself first. Do good business for a while. There may be. But for some reason, in the black community, we are so impressed with somebody going to jail for a crime or prison for a crime especially when it comes to like fraud coming out and then getting back into the fucking financial space again like yeah we're gonna we're gonna just like run we're gonna fall over ourselves to give this guy money it's like no he went to prison for fucking fraud maybe give him a bit of time to get on his feet first maybe make him earn his fucking um what's the thing called make him earn the respect or the loyalty or whatever it may be of people again don't just be impressed by it be like wow so odd anyway let's play again for the start I met Caesar. Met Caesar. Caesar is flipping NJ is uh, my partner in right. New Jersey. He owns over sixteen hundred units in New Jersey and all throughout the country. And Caesar was in prison before. Caesar was in prison. Caesar wow. was locked up and he learned how to do real estate in prison. In pri wow. wow. He learned how to do the real estate. We gotta bring Caesar up here one day. Yeah, yeah. He loved to do it. And shout out to my guy, the credit dude, man. Yeah. So with Caesar, he taught me how to do it the right way. He taught me, you know, why he was like his first thing is why are you using your money? I said, What you mean? He said. You don't use your money. You use other people's money to get these deals. They started teaching me the game of how to do it without using and using minimal money. And that's what I've been trying to teach people. When I first started to really say, I called three people. Way. I called Clue. Mm -hmm. I called Fabulous. Mm -hmm. I called Joe Button. Mm -hmm. Right? My Desert Storm family. And I said, hey, guys, I'm doing real estate. This is something that I think that, you know, you should invest a little bit of money in, try it out, and that way you can do it. Joe Button told me it was a Ponzi scheme and I was going to go to jail. <laughs> Fab. Joe Budden is a fucking prophet. He called it out from minute one. Joe Budden told MV in the beginning it's a pro it's a Ponzi scheme. And look at them chuckling. <laughs> he doesn't know business. Joe Budden's so dumb. Damn. I was like, ah, I'll call you back. And Clue was like, nah, it's not for me. But I tried to teach them how to do it because I wanted my brothers to eat. So and I met Caesar. So big up Joe Budden for being um, on it and clocking what was happening. And in the last video I want to play on this whole entire thing, has to be, has to be the famous video of Rick Ross and um, Rick, or Rick Ross with Meek Mill on Funk Flesh basically going off, going off on fucking Envy. This is a great rant. One of the best rants of all time. Happened recently, actually, when all the stuff was happening. I love Rick Ross. Rick Ross is absolutely destroying Envy on this whole thing. And your car game mean, my brother. Let's not. Uh, listen, man, we got to talk about cars. You're trying. <laughs> you the only car. You the only 
You the only one on radio that rep cars, been repping cars. You been having deals with Ford and Chevrolet. You been long talking time. Re- long time, years. Listen to me, you New not York. doing fraud. This guy you right ain't here. stealing cars. <laughs> not you. No, <laughs> we not selling bad houses. No, we ain't selling fake houses. <laughs> oh, no, you no, 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 we not gonna steal no old lady houses. Uh, that's not, not nice. Gonna, nah, nah, you ain't. You going to hell? You knew you was gonna get it you today. Go to for stealing those oh, old man. houses. Listen, oh, my God. listen, New York. Oh my God, Charlemagne. We are not up here selling man. the Brooklyn Bridge. Hey, Charlemagne, <laughs> Charlemagne, come with flex. Oh, come with flex. Man. Come on, come on. Shout out to Mr. Touchy Feely. Come on, Touchy Feely. <laughs> come on. Hey, I got 10,000 cash right now for anybody that's listening. And more importantly, we not doing fraud. Flex not doing fraud. He ain't selling no bad houses. He ain't selling no fake houses. He ain't doing none of that. I'm telling you. And when Rose said, I'm telling you, I can't say that for nobody else. We are not selling the Brooklyn Bridge. You cannot buy that from us. Oh, my God. You cannot buy the Statue of Liberty. Oh, Oh my God. It's called thievery. Somebody's going to. You cannot buy the Statue of Liberty. It's called thievery. Love it. Jail! Oh my God, the real estate Rico. The real estate Rico. <laughs> What's our boy Tony? Tony's in town too. Real Tony's in town. town. Charlemagne, come work with Funk. Oh, anyway, you get the gist of it. Big up Rick Ross, <laughs> putting his foot on fucking Envy as everything is going down. But yeah, it's looking bad for Envy. He's probably going to end up in jail, unfortunately. But it's his own fault, really, and it? it really is his own fault. He has no loss of blame, but his own. Blood clot self.